Hello everyone, you're so welcome here. My name is Helen, this is the Shrimpy Migi channel. This is your space and my space to discuss different hair issues. As you guys may or may not know, welcome if you're new to the channel. I talk a lot about hair loss, in particular my experiences with Rogaine, so you can feel free to go ahead and watch some of those videos as well. But I talk about just generally about hair loss and how to stop it and stuff like that as well. So today I wanted to share these things that have been really working well for me to stop losing so much hair when I wash it because I'm sure for many of you who are dealing with hair loss, especially women, it is so traumatizing to lose a bunch of hair when you are in the shower and you just feel like tons and tons and tons is coming out. And I feel like not everybody understands this. I mean, you can tell people and they're like, well, so what, I lose hair too. But it's just something uniquely traumatizing about it. And so I, if no one, if everyone else is denying you, I just want to tell you, I believe you. If no one else believes you, I totally believe you. Feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions about this video or any of my other videos. You know, my channel's still quite small, so I have time still to answer everybody, and I am sure to do that. And if you don't want to do that publicly, check me out on Instagram. I'm at shrimpy.miggy, and so slide into my DMs, and I will answer you. Sometimes it takes me a week, because I'm not on Instagram the mostest. I'm not Instagram all that much, but I do check in once a week to make sure that I'm not missing any questions, and so feel free to get in touch with me there, and I will answer you there as well, most definitely. Um, but I wanted to talk about hair loss, washing it, and what I've been doing that's been working well. So I'm gonna answer, does washing cause hair loss? I'll leave that sort of to a bit later and just get right into the steps now, because uh, I have some thoughts about that and I have done some research about it, but um, I'm just gonna go through my steps starting now. First step, before you even have a drop of water fall on your head in the shower, and I hope you guys excuse me, but I will not be washing my hair and taking one of those like shower YouTube videos. Those are great, but I'm just like, I'm not gonna be in my swimsuit right now, it, it, like showing you guys how I wash my hair. You guys know how to wash hair, but there are other great videos out there like that if you're into that, but I will be taking you through all the steps that I do, and I, I'm sure you guys will get the gist. Uh, my very first step is that I brush my hair out, so I've been doing that, and so if you don't use a tangle teaser, um, this is the best brush, I think. I love the feeling of brushing my hair, and I like to do it before I even get in the shower because, you know, you're gonna have like loose hair and loose strands. I would never just hop in the shower to start washing. I feel that this also breaks up the hair. You know, I have wavy hair, so you wanna kinda break it up. I like to, it stimulates the scalp a bit because these are nice and soft. And then whatever hair you get, you can easily remove, which I also love about this brush. I am not getting paid, none of this is sponsored. This is just like my own experiences with this stuff, but I love the Tangle Teaser, and I've yet, I've tried a lot of different brushes, and I've yet to find one that does a better job of um, just brushing my hair before I take a shower. So definitely brush before you hop in. That will remove a lot of the hair, hopefully, that, that you know, get it out before you get into the shower because it sucks, it sucks. And you just spend a lot of time in the shower like taking strands out of your fingers and like putting them somewhere or like just getting rid of them. So why not just brush it out first? It feels really nice as well. So the second thing that I do is, you know, I wash my hair a little bit more frequently than I had been doing thinking that it'd be better for my hair to get it, my scalp to get a bit more oily and stuff like that. I had sort of reduced my hair washing to about once every four days. And let me tell you, it just wasn't working for me. I just found that I was losing a lot of hair then. And it makes perfect sense because I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later. You do lose a certain amount of hair every day. And so by the time you get to your fourth day, you know, that's four days of hair loss. If it didn't come out and you, you're trying not to brush it too much because I'm wearing my hair in a wavier style, which means less brushing. I'll talk about that a little bit too. If you wait that many days, you know, you're just gonna have a lot of, it's just math. It's just simple math. So what I've been trying to do is wash it every two to three days, brush it before I wash it. I'm finding that way my scalp just feels cleaner, my hair just feels cleaner and lighter and nicer, and my head just gets itchy after like three days as is, does for a lot of people. Some people stop washing their hair altogether, so I'm sure you've heard of this. They just use water or they just, you know, um, some people use conditioner to wash their hair, which is kind of a different thing. And I'm not gonna get into all of that. That's called co-washing. I'm not gonna get into all of that. I'm just gonna talk about strictly what's been helping me. Every two days, maybe three days if I wanna stretch it, meaning every second day, uh, for me is the sweet spot. I just find that I can manage my hair much better. The loss seems to be less, even though math tells me that, you know, it's not. It's just that I don't have four days accumulation. I just have, you know, the two days of accumulation of hairs falling out. So for me, that's just mentally puts me in a better space. You know, that may or may not be for you, but it's working right now for me. Uh, and so I wanna get into another tip that I found to be 
actually helping a lot and I really didn't think it would have any bearing at all but I was watching Brad Mondo and if you don't watch him he's like an amazing hairstylist youtuber so if you're into hair stuff as I am he's definitely worth checking out he spoke recently about how to shampoo your hair and he was actually surprised that some people just don't know the basics and so he was saying one of the big problems is that people use way 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 too much shampoo and 100% totally guilty of this myself I would put a big old palm, uh, just a big palm of shampoo, like maybe this much, you know, a nice heaping helping of it, and I would just put it on my hair, and I would just scrub, just like I would just go to town, just trying to get my scalp all nice and squeaky clean, and listen, it's overkill. What I've learned is like dial it way, way back, and your hair is just as clean, and you've just, you know, you're just much more gentle on your hair and on your scalp, and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. You know, Brad Mondo advocates using two dimes worth of shampoo. So I will insert some video of that, what that might look like. Here are two dimes. It's a Canadian one and an American one, and they're the exact same size. But any small coin will work. Like if you're in Europe and you're watching this, it doesn't have to be exactly, it's just like one of the smaller coins, right? What he's saying is just don't use a huge palmful of it. You know, just use the amount of two coins. And so once you do that, emulsify it, right? So what you wanna do is like build up a tiny bit of lather. And so once you've built up that tiny bit of lather, then go into your scalp and just try and get in there gently. What I try and do in terms of technique is that I don't go like in circles. I used to do that just like, oh, let's just really, ooh, let's have one of these shampoo moments. Like you see in commercials, don't do that anymore. At least I don't and it seems to help. I just kind of go, like I just kind of rub it with this sort of gentle back and forth motion and try and get the scalp as best as I can. And I really don't worry too much about the hair itself or the ends because the shampoo will sort of dribble its way through there with the washing action and it's plenty. So if you do have a lot of product in your hair or your hair got particularly dirty, which it shouldn't if you're washing it every two days or so, but let's say it's been a week, just do a second wash, you know. And, or you can maybe use a tiny bit more, but my suggestion is just wash it once and then just wash it a second time because you're really just trying to concentrate on the scalp and don't go to town. Do not scratch and scratch and scratch on your poor scalp. You know, does it cause actual hair loss to do that? I'll talk about that in a minute. Stay tuned to the end. Um, just make a nice lather and so, now that we're talking about shampoo, I'm gonna talk about the shampoos that I've been using, what works and what doesn't. I. I'm notorious even on this channel for talking about thickening shampoos. I um, do use them, but they're very drying um, and they kind of dry out your scalp, to be honest. Like the, the point of them is to sort of clarify your hair and get rid of the buildup and it'll be light and fluffy and beautiful. But I find the downside is because they're so drying, they're kind of tangling and with tangles comes out more hair. So what I've switched to is, um, a more conditioning shampoo. So I have this one as well, and I, when I bought it, I wasn't too sure if this Kerastase, it cost a fortune. It's like a ridiculous amount of money to spend on something that goes down the drain in like two minutes, but gosh, it's just nothing like this shampoo. I love it so, so much, and I thought, and I used to use it when I had this like huge, huge head of hair, and now that I don't have nearly as much hair, um, it still works really good. I was afraid it would be too heavy because it is very thick and very creamy. I thought it would be way too heavy, and it isn't. It's like a miracle shampoo. I really love it, but find your own hydrating shampoo that has a really conditioning effect. It doesn't have to be this brand. Just maybe stay away from the thickening ones if you're finding right now that your hair is falling out a lot. Just go for something more moisturizing and just be a lot more soft with yourself. You know, just softly, softly, softly wash your hair. That is my biggest tip, soft. Whatever intensity you're working at, you just pretend your arms are really sore or like, you know, your fingers are hurting you and just take it down a notch because I think all of us just wanna get that, you know, we've got this thing where, oh, if you've got a scrub to get it clean and don't scrub, do not scrub. It's just you're yanking, you're drying things out too much. It's just way, way, way overkill. Pretend your head is like a baby's head, okay, and don't. And you wouldn't be all rough, I hope, on a tiny baby, so don't be so rough on yourself, people. Okay, so next point. The next thing I wanted to talk about is conditioner. So if you're like me, when you start to put all this big conditioner in, okay, not in the roots, but from the mids to the ends, you're gonna start like raking through it and like just really trying to work it into every strand using your fingers. And then you're like, ah, it's a horror show with like tons of hair in your fingers. Well, let me show you with my new technique that I've sort of been using. Um, I can't exactly say it's my technique, but it's a technique that's new to me. I've kind of been using 
As you can see, like my hair is a bit wavy and I'm trying to go for a bit of a wavy look right now and stay away from heat styling. I'm trying to let my hair air dry. It's still dry right now. I just don't want to use any hot stuff on it because I'm just trying to let the moisture sink in. And so I'm sort of using a sort of modified curly girl method. And if you are a curly or a wavy um, person, then go ahead and check those out. But I'm going to show you. I mean, this is really gross. I'm sorry. This is like... This is the gross side of me, but like all of us, we sometimes like to look and see like what's fallen off of our heads. But I just want to show you, like not so much hair fell out this time. And so, um, and I honestly think it's sort of down to my conditioning technique. So what I do is I squish my hair. I don't rake like a mad woman, which is what I was doing. Be like, rake, 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 rake. Let's get the conditioner really penetrated through every last lock. Again, overkill. And then I'd find like tons of hair in my fingers and so, that was just really stressful. In fact, when I would condition, I would find like twice the amount of hair. Is that happening to you guys too? If it does, can you let me know in the comments? Um, because I don't think I could be alone in this. Something about the conditioner makes the hair cling to the fingers. And when you rake it, it seems like all of it just seems to come out. And so what I do now is I just put the conditioner on and I try and, you know, I emulsify it and I just lather it up. You can't lather conditioner. You know what I mean? Rub it between my fingers get it distributed through my fingers and just sort of squish it in. Just put it on and squish, 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 squish. I squish, I don't rake anymore. So I've just been squishing, squish, 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 rinse it out. And when I rinse it out, I'm not raking again. There's no need for that. I just, I'm just sort of trying to squish the water out. I'm just squishing with this up motion, this upward motion. That's the only motion that I'm doing once the conditioner is in. I'm just letting the water do the work of taking it out, but I'm not doing any kind of this frantic stuff that I used to be doing to get at the conditioner out. I'm just, I've given that up and it seems to help. Like I said, I just had a, a very small amount of strands come out this time. So I was happy about that. And for the last few times that I've been trying conditioner. And so those are the main things that I've been doing. So just to quickly review, brush before you wash your hair, use much less shampoo and just shampoo your hair twice instead of using a huge amount of shampoo. It's just unnecessary to use that much shampoo. Switch to a conditioning shampoo instead of a thickening shampoo just for now. Um, and then when you find if like your hair is looking heavier, you just know when you need a clarifying shampoo. And so when you need to clarify your hair, just switch back just one time, but um, switch it up between the shampoos. Don't just keep using the thickening shampoos day after day after day, they can be a bit drying. Two dime size amounts next time you shampoo and just concentrate on your scalp and then just do it twice if you need to. Let me know if you try this. I wanna hear from you guys. I would like you to let me know if this ends up working for you or not. And squish to condish. The whole squish to condition your hair that is wording that comes from the curly girl community. So I don't, I just wanna give credit where credit is due. I did not come up with that, but yeah, just go in there and squish. And so the last thing I promised to talk about, which is does washing your hair cause more hair to fall out? And so all the evidence that we have says no, it doesn't. There's nothing specifically about washing your hair that makes it fall out. What happens is that your hair gets loose. And so it's loose. And so the actual act of washing it, putting the water on it, putting the shampoo, just getting in there on your scalp, makes it come out, makes the loose hair come out. So it would have come out one way or the other. That's what I'm trying to say. So like, it's nothing that you're doing. It's not like the shampoo you're using. It's not, it's not any of that stuff. It's not necessarily your technique, but if you just want to see less of it actually come out, these are the things that have been working for me, uh, but it will come out eventually. See, so that's the thing about all this. You can work really hard at trying to keep it in, in the shower and it's definitely less stressful. So hopefully this can reduce your stress levels by less hair coming out, but overall it doesn't make actual less hair. That's determined by, you know, inside of your body. So I hope that that explains it well, you know, I am certainly no scientist or expert. I'm just someone who's dealt with a hell of a lot of hair loss and done a lot of research on the subject. And I kind of wish there was more high level research. I really feel that this is something that is lacking. And I feel like because this is sort of this sort of hair loss stuff tends to be a woman's issue to some degree uh, in the shower, we don't often get taken seriously. So I wanna say that if you don't get taken that seriously by your doctor, you're definitely not alone. Um, it's unfortunate, but, uh, but I believe you. If nobody else believes you and nobody else takes you seriously, I definitely believe you. I hope you join me here. Be sure to like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe, and that way you won't miss when I make more of this stuff. So everybody have a great day and hope to see you soon. Bye.